On May 19th, 125 years ago, a little girl was born in New York, Ida Pauline Rolf. I'm going to attempt to retrace parts of her life in a quest to find a balance between humankind and the energy field we all live in, the field of gravity. Ida Rolf's interest in the human physical body originally came from concerns about her own health. As a young woman, she had been struck by a horse's hoof in the chest and had developed symptoms that looked like pneumonia. Since the usual pneumonia treatments did not have any effect, she tried the help of an osteopath to put a very twisted rib back into place and immediately she could breathe again freely. In her own words, It was unusual to go to an osteopath at that time. There was still a great deal of controversy between the medics and the osteopaths, and they were not accepted at all. I got to be friends with my osteopath, and I became interested in the theory of osteopathy, that structure determines function. A contemporary seeker later in life was Moshe Feldenkrais. He and Ida Rolf were friends, rivals, in endless discussions about the proper approach. Ida Rolf's structural integration was based on her view of the fascial body being the determining factor, which stood against Feldenkrais's functional integration based on muscles. She came from the stillness of yoga, he came from the movement of judo. They hated and loved each other. And on her 80th birthday, Moshe Feldenkrais wrote to Ida Rolf, now that I'm writing to you, I would like you to know that I know a few people of your intellectual integrity. I mean people who created something and exactly do what they say they're doing. You need not to do more than what you say in as much as what you do is already extraordinary. Your teaching is as unique as your insight and your skill. Structural integration and functional integration have more in common than the word that connects them. Indeed, in the case of humans, structure and function are meaningless one without the other, so that when you integrate structure as nobody else can, you improve functioning. The sharpness of your intellect and your indefeatable spirit can age but never grow old. I hope I will be there on your 100th birthday to wish you good health for the future. Your friend and admirer, Moshe Feldenkrais. People who created something and do exactly what they say they're doing. So what exactly was it that Ida Rolf created? I hope I will be able to demonstrate that structural integration does not merely constitute another technique, but it is an invitation to take up a different point of view, to look at a human body through a different set of glasses. But let's track back a little bit. We're still in New York in 1917, with the world in flames and American soldiers fighting in Europe. The men off to war, the chance for the women to study and work. Ida Rolf graduated from Barnard College in 1916 and went on to work on her PhD in biological chemistry at Columbia's College of Physicians and Surgeons and in the chemistry department of the Rockefeller Institute. Quote Ida Rolf. I was working in organic chemistry. As a matter of fact, I was working in chemotherapy, and I was one of the workers in a laboratory at the Rockefeller Institute. They were trying to solve the problem of solvism and neosolvism. The American product was proving very toxic. The German product was fine, but the German product was no longer available because of the war. So part of the research of the Rockefeller Institute as its wartime service was to try and get a better product. But Ida Rolf's interests had always been very diverse. You might call her a Renaissance personality. And once the dust had settled on the battlefields of Europe, Ida Rolf, on a leave of absence from the Rockefeller Institute, went on to study physics in Zurich, 
and homeopathy in Geneva, Switzerland. How exciting must it have been to study physics in Europe in 1926? The 1920s were certainly one of the most exciting periods in the history of physics and Europe was the scene of the drama. Auguste Picard, Heisenberg, Schrödinger, Niels Bohr, Marie Curie, Albert Einstein and others were hashing out the details of quantum mechanics, creating an entire new physics and changing our understanding of the universe at a rapid pace. Homeopathy and physics. This is how far her interests went. The woman who, according to credible sources, carried a pendulum in her handbag would later say, all this metaphysics is fine, but be mighty sure you got physics underneath the metaphysics. Back in New York in the 1930s, Adderolf started practicing yoga, especially tantric yoga, with Pierre Bernard. The people who visited his ashram in upstate New York represented a kaleidoscope of who's who upper class prominence of the East Coast. In the late 30s, I used to visit a weekly yoga group that worked up in Nyack, New York. It was under Pierre Bernard. Bernard was doing great work because he was bringing in the thoughts which all of us now acknowledge as our present-day philosophies, but which were relatively unknown at that time. Bernard was a tantric-trained yoga teacher. Is there any relationship between the philosophy of Tantra and some of the ideas in structural integration? I don't think there's any doubt about that. So many of our modern ideas are pure and unadulterated tantric philosophy translated into contemporary American life. The whole idea that mind and body are one was basically a tantric idea. It did not come from our Western European medicine, not at all. Our colleague Sam Johnson from Texas concluded after extensive research that either Rolf was balancing within herself two paradigms, Hippocrates and Descartes. Descartes' idea was to restore balance and let the organism solve a problem on its own, whereas Descartes would find a cause and then a resolution to a problem using scientific methods. Hippocrates had seen health as a reflection of balance in the body and illness consequently was a result of imbalance. Internal imbalance caused by living habits, environmental factors, hygiene, etc. led to disease. From that idea followed the belief that if a physician could intervene in such a way that balance was restored in the body, illness could be healed. The 17th century then saw a gigantic paradigm shift. René Descartes published his Discours de la méthode, which laid the foundation for the development of the scientific approach we still know today. This was a crucial change. The scientific method would give scientists a schema for studying nature. It gave reductionism its tool to study the parts systematically. The biochemist and Yogini Eiderolf was fascinated by both. She ultimately chose Hippocrates and in some ways started a bold attempt to bridge the gap between him and Descartes. Structural integration started nearly accidentally. Ida Rolf had made the acquaintance of a lady in New York who had been doing unusually inspiring musical work with children. Ida Rolf wanted this lady to teach her children play the piano. The lady, however, had badly hurt her arms by falling on a hole in the pavement of the New York streets and was unable to play the piano anymore. The tools the medical profession offered had been exhausted. Quote Eiderolf, I looked at Ethel and I said, I bet I can fix that. Do you trust me to try? You can't be worse off. I'll make you a bargain. If I can get you to a place where you can teach music, will you teach my children? She said yes. And so I started really with yoga exercises, which I myself was using at that point. After we worked together about four times, she was in good enough shape to start teaching music. 
And that is where structural integration really started. Because of course, Ethel had a friend who hadn't been able to get help and this friend had a friend and so forth. And from then on, my doorstep was pretty much filled with people who hadn't gotten help elsewhere. The next 30 years of her life, Ida Roth spent working with people and developing the ideas and methods of structural integration before she systematically started teaching. The Esalen Institute, commonly simply called Esalen, is a non-profit American retreat center and intentional community in Big Sur, California. It focuses on humanistic alternative education. The Institute played a key role in the human potential movement beginning in the 1960s. Its innovative use of encounter groups, a focus on the body-mind connection, and their ongoing experimentation and personal awareness introduced many ideas that later became mainstream. It was Fritz Perls, the founder of Gestalt Therapy, who called Ida Roth to Essel in the mid-60s and offered her the first possibility to train people. Fritz Perls describes Ida Rolf and her work in an interview like this. And Ida Rolf really helped you with your heart trouble? This I cannot say. She certainly helped me with the main symptom, those angina pectoris pains that made life so miserable that I was willing to end it all. In this sense, she saved my life. Ida has a holistic outlook. She looks at the whole body and tries to relocate whatever is out of balance. She tears the sheath around the muscles apart to give the muscles breathing space, as she says, and she stimulates atrophied muscles. This tearing apart must be pretty painful. <laughs> Sometimes agonizing. I usually have a cigarette break after 20 minutes. Well, why does she not do this under an anesthetic? She claims she needs cooperation. In some places, the muscle tissue is imploded and she works until you get let go of the spasm. One day I will be a naughty boy and try and be rolfed under nitrous oxide, laughing gas. So what is the connection with your heart trouble? In angina pectoris, the muscles around your heart and in the left arm become very painful. This is probably nature's way of stopping you from overworking your sick heart. So Ida opened up the cramps in all those muscles and I could breathe freely. I also had sometimes very painful paralyzing back aches, which have improved about 80 to 90%. Altogether, you see that I have all the reasons to be deeply grateful. What kind of a person is she? A very powerful, big angel. It was here at Esalen that Ida Rolf developed and refined the approach many of us still use today. The basic 10 series, a systematic program of postural repatterning using connective tissue manipulation and movement education. It was here at Esalen that some clients started experiencing psychological changes. They reported being more self-assured, less troubled by little things, more centered, calmer, or were able to better stand up for themselves. This for Ida Rolf was a big surprise. The amazing psychological changes that appeared in individuals that had undergone a process of structural integration were completely unexpected. They inevitably suggest that behavior on any level reflects directly the physical energy level of the initiating physical structure. The psychological effect is far greater than one would expect to induce in the brief encounter of 10 hours of work, which is the normal cycle for structural integration. This effect can be understood if we see it as the emergence of a different behavior pattern resulting from the very much greater competence of physical myofascial organization. Thus, Structural integration postulates on the basis of observation that a human being is basically an energy field operating in the greater energy field of the earth. Particularly significant is that energy known as the gravitational field. 
on the basis of observation. Eideroth started off with a Hippocratean idea, create balance within the myofascial web of the human body relative to the energy field in which it moves, the field of gravity. She coined the aphorism, gravity is the therapist. She was way, way, way ahead of her time. In an era when fascia was considered inert filling material, she was bold enough to formulate a radical hypothesis. In her book, The Integration of Human Structures, first published in 1974, she called fascia the basic organ of structure. Being a big fan of semantics, and especially Korzybski, either off always chose her words carefully, and when she said organ, she meant organ. She could not know that more than half a century later, Professor Carlos Stecco would call the fascial web the largest sensory organ. All of this, and I can't emphasize this enough, on the basis of observation. Today, we're starting to bring Descartes into the equation. Scientists all over the world have started researching the second body in the body, the three-dimensional webwork of connective tissue. A lot of the things Adolf claimed on the basis of observation are starting to stand the test of scientific research. Some of them may have a different rationale behind them than I'd originally thought, but overall it is surprising how spot on she was. I'd was torn between two paradigms. She chose Hippocrates and created hypotheses to build a bridge to Descartes. Now it will be up to a next generation to find out why gravity is the therapist. One of the last people to see Ida Rolf was the psychologist and author Murray Korngold. He wrote about his visit I had never laid eyes on Eiderolf before that raw March 1979 Sunday afternoon when I visited her in a Pennsylvania nursing home. I had come to tape an interview. I had wanted to go directly to the source of the structural integration movement to report the original doctrine rather than someone's paraphrase. She lay ravaged by rectal cancer in an attitude of constant attention. Her sight and hearing were not quick and precise. She was immobile, yet at moments her energy would lick out like a tongue of flame, like an old fighter who had the style but not the wind or legs anymore. She made every move count. I admired Eiderolf enormously. Aside from the substantive content of Rolfing, the art and science of human verticality, she had taken her name. She had, by dint of her own efforts, unaided, indeed undermined rather than aided, promulgated, propagandized, demonstrated, taught, persuaded, organized, irreversibly brought into the world a thing of great importance. And she did it all without money without support, while rearing her children and living her life. Murray Korngold asked Eiderolf, Are you aware that there is more of you than there is in the bed? She answered, Yes. The following day, on March 19th, 1979, Ida Pauline Rolf concluded her mission on this planet. 